At the Girls' Day School Trust, when we engage with teachers in schools around our network, we're interested in what is taught, but we're as interested in how it's taught. The what is taught is important for a number of reasons. We know from research that our pupils are very appreciative of and benefit hugely from the immense depth of subject knowledge which our teachers have across the curriculum. That gives our pupils confidence, it allows them to engage in a real learning partnership and that's vital. The what is taught is important in an instrumental sense too because frankly exams, high stakes public exams, still depend upon knowledge and understanding and recall and that's vital too. But the how it's taught is at least as important because we're aiming to produce pupils who, when they leave our schools, have certain dispositions which will stand them in good stead in higher study and in life generally beyond school. We want them to develop dispositions of curiosity, of independence, of self-regulation, of resilience, the sorts of dispositions which are learnt and developed through the process of learning itself. So it's what goes on in classrooms not just the content, but the way in which that content is engaged with by teachers and learners that's important. So our focus is not just on curriculum, the what, but on pedagogy, the how. And our conviction is that we need to engage with the evidence base. We need to work with what is already known about the effectiveness of particular strategies. We need to engage with what works and why in order to make it as successful as, as it can possibly be among our teachers and in our schools. And that's why we work with our teachers, to develop an evidence base, to develop action research projects. And that's why we work with partners such as the Faculty of Education at the University of Cambridge in projects across a number of our schools where we've tried to tease out the day-to-day, lesson-by-lesson strategies that have real uh, effectiveness in terms of learning outcomes. And that's why we've developed uh, a number of programs of training and, and professional development for colleagues around our schools in which teachers get together to share practice, to share ideas and initiatives, to discuss the latest research focused on pedagogy, the tools, what's under the, what's under the bonnet uh, in terms of classroom practice. The first series that we embarked on a couple of years ago was personalised learning. We focused on ways in which we could get the maximum advantage of focusing on individuals, on their trajectory, on their path through the learning process, looking at choice, choice of subjects at particular uh, key choice points uh, along their uh, trajectory through junior and senior school, the way in which assessment can be used to inform and develop interventions in learning to, to maximise its effectiveness, the way that pupils can learn to take control of their learning and make choices about how they research, about how they present, about how they learn most effectively. That led to a slightly more um, tightly focused series in the following year called Girl Friendly Learning. We knew from our own research in partnership with Cambridge University and with other research and experience of our teachers across the network that there are particular challenges and opportunities involved in teaching academically inclined girls uh, who are very keen to learn but also typically very keen to conform to what they see as the expectations of teachers in terms of learning and in terms of behaviour generally. You could call it the dilemma of the good girl. We wanted to make sure that we built on the advantages of that setting but dealt with some of the challenges as well. Um, we're not really distracted by the debates around learning styles, about whether girls learn differently from boys. I don't think there's an awful lot of mileage in that. We're much more interested in girls' learning needs. What we know from talking to teachers around 
the network of our schools and from the research about the balance between security and challenge in teaching academically inclined girls. The way that typically our girls seem to thrive in contexts of collaboration, say rather than competition, in teamwork, in working as groups in open-ended open investigations, for instance. And some of the issues around talk in classrooms, encouraging our girls to engage in debate, engage in discussion, to explore topics and take risks in answering questions rather than going for the absolutely nailed down comprehensive answer to something they're absolutely clear on. To take risks, to engage in learning as a dialogue. So that focus on girl-friendly learning then segued into our latest series starting, starting in September which is focused on confidence and challenge as two sides of the same coin. Visitors to our schools often comment on the immense amount of confidence shown by the girls that show them around, the girls that they see in, 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 in lessons, the girls that they see in uh, extracurricular activities. Our interest, I think, in, at this stage is to focus in on how deep that confidence is and how sustained it's going to be beyond school. You could argue that the definition of confidence is how someone deals with challenge how someone deals with going outside their comfort zone. We want our girls to have a depth of confidence that comes from knowing that they're well equipped to deal with unusual situations, with unexpected challenges, using their knowledge, their understanding, their dispositions in unfamiliar environments and circumstances. And that comes, as I said at the very beginning, not just from what is taught, but how it's taught. Developing that is the main focus of the next stage in our evolving uh, conversation with teachers around our network.